Amen. Come on. Aren't you excited to be a part? Such a beautiful church. Take a look around. Everyone's so awesome and beautiful. Uh, can you tell your neighbor, you look good today? Uh, you look good today. Uh, tell the other person, uh, you're all right. You know, just <laughs> Hey, welcome to Somos. I'm, I'm so glad that you are here uh, this incredible Sunday. If this is your first time here, uh, we hope you feel at home. Can we make some noise for our first time guests uh, in the room? Um, I have to say uh, the month of March, uh, it's my favorite uh, it's when I was born. So March babies are the best. But uh, every month we have a different series that, that we go through. And uh, this month, to be honest, it's been my favorite. Uh, we're in this series called Essentials. Can you say with me, Essentials? And today is actually our last day, which I'm bummed out. But, but I'm telling you, this this series has been so good. We've been talking about Jesus and how essential he is. So if you've missed, you need to go to our YouTube channel, Somos Church, or podcast, and, and just uh, watch, hear the messages, because uh, they have been so good, because we're talking about Jesus. Uh, so do that. I'm going to re-watch and re-listen, because it's been so, so good. Jesus is essential. Can you say with me, essential? Jesus is the message. He is the good news. He is the new covenant, the promise that we have from God. Jesus comes and sets us free. He gives us salvation. Uh, Jesus uh, is essential. It is through Jesus that we can have a relationship with God. Say with me, essentials. Jesus is essential. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Ephesians 1, uh, verse 11 says, It's in Christ, listen to this, it's in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. It is in Jesus that we find out who we are and what we are living for. It is Jesus that is fundamental, essential to who we are, even in our identity. It doesn't matter how young you are or old you are, it is in Jesus that you discover yourself. Today's message, uh, as we're wrapping up today, uh, is called, If You Say So. Come on, tell your neighbor, if you say so. If you say so. Uh, as we start today, I want to ask, uh, how many people in the room, you consider yourself a morning person? You're a morning person. Are you going to be our 9.30 a.m. people? Man, that's like crazy. Okay, raise, like you should be proud. Like, okay, morning person, all right, morning people. Uh, afternoon, you just feel like energized afternoon. Anyone? You know, anyone? Yeah. Night owl, you're a night owl, not all my night people, my night people, all right. Um, you know, I never thought I would say this, uh, but, but I really think I'm a morning person. You know, I, 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 I used to think, I, I'm going to explain, you are the one that's not a morning person. Let me, let me prove my point, let me prove my point, okay? So being a morning person, it's not that you wake up early. Like if you have a job, you have to go to, you have to wake up early. That doesn't make you a morning person. What makes you a morning person is you enjoy, you feel energized in the morning. For some people, it's in the afternoon, some like you just feel energized, right? So you wake up early, but you've gotten better though, you know? Uh, yeah, but yeah. Now I can say so, because before you used to wake up cranky. Uh, <laughs> it's in the mornings that I just feel just energized. There's nothing like waking up, you know, refreshed. You had a good night's sleep. Uh, you get good five hours if you're a parent, you know. You feel like you can conquer the world. And you grab a cup. No, nothing is better like a cup of coffee in the morning. You know, it's, it's God coffee. It's just, it all works, you know. Uh, but I, I really believe I'm a morning person. Something that I will tell you, though, about, about me is that whenever I get home after work, I am done. I, I'm like a zombie. 
I'm just going based off like muscle memory, you know, like I do what I need to do, put the kids to sleep. And I'm, if, if my body touches the couch, it's game over. Anyone like, after work, you're just like done. It's like, I can't, don't talk to me about anything. Let me watch some reality TV. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> and just get distracted from the problems of life. Uh, let me see some drama. Okay, let me get to the message, okay? <laughs> after work, I'm just done. It's, it's like done, done. Uh, and today, as we're looking into essentials, like how am I going to connect this, right? I don't know. Let's try to figure this out. No, but today we're looking at a story about Jesus and this interaction he has with these people after work. And honestly, I'm impressed by the way these men reacted to Jesus after work that I'm like, man, there's some like good stuff in here. So let's dive into Luke chapter 5, uh, verse 1. It says, Jesus, what, uh, Jesus was preaching on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Great crowds pressed in on him to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for the fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, I mean, I'm just like Jesus is savage, like two empty boats, he just steps on them, you know, I'm like, Jesus. Uh, and Jesus asked Simon, its owner, to push it out into the water. So he sat in the boat and taught the crowds from there. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, now go out where it's deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Master, Simon replied, we work hard all last night. I am done. I, we work hard all all last night, like, I'm tired, I cleaned the nets, like, we didn't catch a thing. You know, and it's interesting, this story, right, because you have this picture of Jesus just savagely stepping into a boat that he doesn't own. He didn't ask for permission. He just steps into this boat, and he doesn't only step into this boat, but he just, owner, push me. And I can just picture like Jesus uh, just like in the boat, sitting down and just push me around, you know? And, and for some reason, these guys just obeyed him, you know? It's just mind-blowing to me. And then Jesus goes, hey, go deeper and cast your nets, right? Throw, like, do some more fishing. And, and, and it's kind of like, Jesus, are you missing the picture here? Uh, anyone been fishing here? Uh, I, I've been fishing once and I hated it. Uh, you have to get up early, like really early. And, and you just, and I don't know if I just didn't know what I was doing or what, the people that I was with, but I just like, I'm there with a stick in the morning in the water. And it's like, what's the fun in this? Like, this is not fun. And we didn't fish anything. So I can relate with the pain, you know, and, and that's even like a little bit. These men, they, they, they work hard. I mean, they got up 4, 5 a.m., and it's not like engine boats. Like, they have to row. So they're tired. They're throwing nets, right? Like, it, it is hard work, hard labor. These businessmen finish their day with no success at all. So they park the boats, they're washing the nets. This man goes into the boat, hey, push it. It's like, you know, like they go push it. And Jesus preaches, uh, I don't know how long, two hours, you know. They didn't have, you know, someone telling them that they only have a certain amount of time, right? Johnny, you know, like how to preach. Uh, so maybe he preached for two hours, I don't know. When he finishes, like, hey, let's go out fishing. It's like, what? What's up with this man? Didn't ask for permission. Starts commanding everyone around. And, and, and I just believe that there's something essential that we need to learn here. Because these men allowed themselves to be inconvenienced. They allowed themselves to get uncomfortable. They, they allowed themselves to push past their flesh. They were tired. They were exhausted. 
physically, emotionally. They were businessmen. They were stressed out that they didn't fish anything and they're cleaning and like this whole situation it's not comfortable and then this man says say go do this go do that can, can you allow yourself to be inconvenienced can, can I ask you this question could you allow Jesus to inconvenience you can you allow Jesus to inconvenience you Let, let's bring it into context a little bit you're driving your car and someone's telling your car and someone's telling you, go right, stop. Hey, spouses, you know. <laughs> Can you allow Jesus to come into your car and, and tell you what to do, where to go? Can, can you allow someone in your business to come and tell you what to do? Can you allow someone in your marriage to come and tell you what to do? Can you allow yourself to to allow someone to come into your parenting and your finances and tell you what to do. Can, can you allow Jesus to get in your business? Can you allow him to inconvenience you? You know, my first point today, I uh, have three points today. The first one is that it is essential to make room for inconvenience. You need to make room for inconvenience. These men would have missed out on a crazy miracle that we'll read right now. But they would have missed out on this incredible miracle. Incredible miracle. If they didn't allow themselves to get uncomfortable. To get inconvenience. And this is the complete opposite of what we're trying to do in life. Our whole lives are about how convenient can we make it. Like, I love the Google Home app that I can, I don't need to get up my bed to turn on and off the heater and the, 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 the AC. Like, I don't need to fight with my wife. I have control because she doesn't have the app, you know. <laughs> Our whole lives are about how comfortable can we get, how comfortable, how, in, like, I don't want inconvenience. Don't inconvenience me at all. Any kind of inconvenience that comes to you, you look at that inconvenience and you say, you devil, get out of here. What if that inconvenience comes from Jesus? What if the inconveniences of your life are coming from Jesus? It makes no sense that Jesus would come and come into their boats and just say, push it. And these guys go and push it. It doesn't make sense that, that, that Jesus would come and say, hey, go deeper and cast. It's like, Jesus, it's on not even fishing time. Fishing time is in the morning. It's afternoon. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, I'm tired, God. I'm, I'm, like, I'm just done for the day. And I have compassion for the tiredness after work. It's like I told you, I, I can't. After work, I can't. But these men, after hard physical labor, they allow themselves to be inconvenienced. Can you allow God to inconvenience you? So many people in their walk with God in faith, they, they do this, and I've done this, right? That we say, well, God didn't come through in this way, or I don't know if God's real, or well, I don't know. Like, we, we question God, and we question God, and we have our doubts, and those are good. We need to bring them to, to Him, but there's a lot of our doubts, our questions. There's a lot of things that we haven't experienced from God because we don't like to be inconvenienced. Like, from the basic things, read your Bible. Big inconvenience. The most basic fundamental thing to do as a follower of Jesus to figure out who, who Jesus is and the promises he has for you. And that's an inconvenience. Prayer, forget about it. Me talking by myself in a room, you know, like, that's not only inconvenient, it's weird, you know. Serving, giving, preaching to others, praying for others, you name it. We miss out on the power of Jesus because we don't like to be, help me out, inconvenience. We don't like 
to be inconvenienced. Can you allow in this season of your life, can you allow Jesus to inconvenience you? On the other side of your inconvenience, there's a crazy miracle. On the other side of you getting uncomfortable, you pushing past your flesh, there's a miracle out there for you. This Jesus comes and inconvenience these men. They allow Jesus to push them. They allow Jesus to make them uncomfortable. They allow them, they allow Jesus to, to grow them. Jesus wants to grow you. You know, these men, Simon specifically, he was used to write a whole, a whole uh, part of the Bible. He was used to start the first church in the world. Like Jesus used him in a mighty way, in a powerful way. Can you imagine if Simon would have missed out on writing the Bible, on being the, the first church in the world, world, seeing miracles, seeing people being raised from the dead, seeing multiplication. Can you imagine if this man would have missed out because he didn't allow himself to get inconvenienced? There's some moments in my life that I'm like, thank God that I didn't allow my comfortableness, if that's even a word, to, to just keep me where I was. Thank God for the inconveniences. Thank God for the changes. Thank God for the heartaches. Thank God for the closed doors. Thank God for those moments that I was kicked in the butt and pushed. Like, thank God for those moments that I didn't see how I was going to get out. Thank God for the moments that I was losing my mind. Lose Like, thank God for the inconveniences that I allowed God to come and move and change and get me outside of my comfort zone. Come on, it is essential to allow Jesus to inconvenience us. If we want to grow, if we want to experience the beautiful life that God has designed for you, you need to be inconvenienced. I, I want to encourage you to just surrender to the idea of what you have created. We work so hard to create different things in our lives and God's like, oh, that's cute. Can you push the boat? Can you go out and fish again? In other words, Jesus, Jesus' words, go out where it is deeper. Go out where it is deeper and let down your nets to catch some fish. Jesus is saying, go out deeper. You, you, you've been to a certain place, go deeper. Fish again. Go again. Don't give up. Go out deeper. My second point today, it is essential to go deeper. If you want to experience this powerful Jesus, if you want to experience the miraculous power that he has, how he comes alive on the inside of you and everything that, that happens around you, you can't keep it at a surface level. You just can't. Like, you can. And Jesus will be there with you in the kiddie pool, or Jesus will be with you out in the deep. But man, it is in the deeper that you experience him at a whole other level. It is in the deep end that you will experience him making things that are unstable, stable. It is in the deep that you will see him walking on water, calming the storms. It is in the deep. Can I encourage you today to go out deeper? Go out deeper with Jesus. He has incredible things for you. You know, I, I, I love my relationship with my wife. Uh, when we were dating, uh, we, we, we did like six months of long distance. She moved to D.C., and, and, and it was super cool, man, you know. And do you remember the dating season, married people, you know? Hey, how are you? What are you doing? Every single day. It's like, dude, the same thing, you know. <laughs> I can hear you breathe. We would talk for hours, man. It's ridiculous, you know. Yeah. 
I can't wait to see you until you come. Can you imagine the day that you come and I pick you up? And we just talk for hours, right? It's beautiful, the dating season. I, I, I love my dating season, our honeymoon uh, stage. We went through some stuff, but it was good. You know, it was awesome. We're married now. We've gone through some stuff. But now we're not at surface level anymore. We've grown deeper. We have three kids. We, we have moved cities. We have started church. We have done ministry. Like we have gone through some things. We have gone through highs. We, got, we have gone through lows. We have some scars. We have developed convictions. Through it all, we've grown deeper. And there's nothing that I, and like I don't miss back then. I thank God for right now. And I'm more in love with you today than ever before because we have grown deeper. Can you envision your life with Jesus growing deeper? Can you envision your life with Jesus growing? Come on, you've been through some stuff. Don't keep it at surface level. There's more for you to discover. There's more miracles for you to experience. There's more steps of faith that you ought to take. There's more word that you need to get on the inside of you. There's more Holy Spirit that needs to come alive in you. Come on, there's more for you. Don't stay on the kiddie pool. Go out into the deep. Jesus is saying, you're going to be in convenience go deeper go deeper you need to get uncomfortable you need to get inconvenience as you go deeper as you go deeper go deeper in the word go deeper in his presence go deeper in the promises that he has for you and I know probably some here today you you're thinking well why go deeper if life is kind of good right now? Why get inconvenience if, I mean, yeah, I have some mental breakdowns regularly. Yeah, I have crazy stresses. I have crazy, you know, like anxiety. I, my family is like wild. My, you know, finances is really getting on me. Like, why? Like, yeah, there's those days, right? But for the most part, you know, like, like I'm good. Like, like, I'm not inconvenienced, right? I have my routines. I have my life. I have my rhythms. Like, why, why get inconvenienced? Why go deeper with God? Why open up the Bible? Why go deeper into getting to know who He is? Like, why? I, I like. I've done some of that already in my life. I watched The Passion of the Christ once, like, Jesus, check, I kind of know what happened there. Like, you know, I'm, I'm good. Like, why, why go deeper? And to be quite honest, if you just don't allow yourself to get inconvenience and go deeper, your life might still be good. Like everything, good days, bad days. But man, the fact that you miss out, like just the idea of missing out, that there's something for you yet to discover that it's just on the other, it's so attainable. It's, it's in reach. But the idea of missing out on the purpose that God has for you, the greatness that God has for you, the legacy that God wants to live, leave in your life, like, just the idea of, man, if I, just, if I just were to discover more about Jesus, I would discover more about me and who I am and my purpose and, and what this life is meant to be. Like, just the idea of, am I going to miss out on what God has for me should be enough to say, I don't care about the inconvenience. I don't care about going deeper. I don't care if I need to let go of some ideas and some thoughts that have been encrusted in me. I, I don't care if I need to let go and let God I'm not going to miss out on the miracles that God has for me I'm not going to allow for me to miss out on the things that are attainable but just because I was too comfortable I missed out on them come on go deeper today 
Go deeper today. Don't play the church game and the religion game of coming and going. God has so much for you. It's time for you to trust. It's time for you to surrender. It's time for you to serve. It's time for you to go to a group. It's time to pray. It's time to read the Bible. It's time to give. It's time to experience the goodness of God in your life today. Come on, it's time. You, your life doesn't need to look the way it looks like today. And I say that for me as well. There's more. There's more for me today. And there's going to be more for me to, to continue pushing until the day I die. We, we don't get to a place of I, I got it. If you get to a place of I got it, I know it all, man. It's the saddest place that you could be. If you know it all, you know it all. And that's that. Come on, there's more that God has for you. You know, I love... The response of Peter. The response of Peter after this interaction is, okay, God, if you say so. If you say so, I'll let the nets down again. If you say so, I let, I'll let my comfort, comfort down. If you say so, I will put my trust issues down. If you say so, I'll stop living with fear. I'll let my fear down. If you say so, God, I'll just take a step of faith again. If you say so, I will go out into the deep and fish again. Come on, don't give up. If God's speaking to you, if God's saying something to you, his word is enough for you to go all right, let me pull up my sleeves. I'm going to go to work again. I don't care how tired I am. God, if you say so, if you say so, God, I will go again. If you say so, I will go right. If you say so, I'll go left. If you say so, I'll move to China. If you say so, I'll stay here. If you say three services, three services. If you say two campuses, two campuses. If you say go, I will go. If you say stop, I will stop. If you say fast, Go fast. If you say, whatever you say, God, I will go. Whatever you say, I will listen. If you say so. And the miracle is that as he said, if you say so, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'll go deeper, let's go. And the miracle is that their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. A shout for hell brought their partners in the other boat as soon as, uh, and soon both of the boats were filled with fish and on the verge of sinking. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell to his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I am such a sinful man because he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught. As were the others with him, his partners, James and John and the sons of Zebedee were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be fishing for people. And as soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. If you say so, God, just if you say so, I'll try it. If you say so, God. If you say so, Peter and these men, businessmen, they, they didn't have the evidence that you and I now have. They didn't know that this Jesus was going to raise people from the dead. They didn't know that he was going to heal people, that he was going to heal the blind, that he was going to heal the paralyzed, that he was going to multiply like fish and bread, like like, they didn't know this. They didn't know that Jesus was going to feed multitudes of people. They didn't know that he was going to raise, uh, he was going to be raised from, the, they didn't know. You and I know. You and I know. You and I have seen. You and I have heard of this Jesus that does miracles, signs, and wonders in our lives, in people's lives. You and I know the evidence. If you say so, God. If you say so, you're trustworthy. Your word is more than enough for me to take whatever step you want me to take. Third point today is that it's essential to take steps of faith. It's essential to take steps of faith. 
faith, Hebrews 11 says that is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. We take steps of faith. Faith is the confidence of what we hope. What we hope. The things that we can't see. Faith is being certain in the uncertain. Faith is not the absence of fear, the absence of doubt. Faith is despite fear, despite doubt. If you say so, I'll try it out. If you say so, I'll go. If you say so, I'll break up with her. If you say so, I'll break up with him. If you say so, I will get married finally. If you say so, I will take that. Like If you say so, I'll try it out. I'll try it out. God's not against the if you say so. God responds to if you say so. If you say so to be pure, I will be pure. If you say so to commit to you, I'll commit to you. If you say so. God doesn't require a whole lot of faith. God just requires even just a little bit of faith. It's a little bit of faith that's enough for you to say, I'll take this step. Faith is connected to the steps. The Bible says that without faith, with faith without action is dead. Faith is this thing that is so powerful, but yet is so, like, it's a hope of what you can see is being, it's being certain in the uncertain. There's doubt in there, but despite that, I, I'll take the step. Like, if you say so, God, I'll take the step. If you say so, I'll pray for my wife. I pray for, for my children. If you say so, I'll cover my home. If you say so, I'll take steps of faith. I'll allow you into my business, every area, everything. God, come and do whatever you have to do, you need to do. If you say so, God, if you want to experience this essential God, you need to take steps of faith. Don't allow yourself to just be stagnant. If you say so, God, I'll move. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. You will make mistakes. You will make mistakes. And it's in the middle of those mistakes, in the middle of those steps that God directs you. We are waiting here like, God, just speak to me. And God's like, I already spoke to you. Just move. Just do something. Like, breathe. Show me you're alive. You know, like. God, give me a word. Open up your Bible. There's full, like, words there, like, all over. Like, just, like, it's there. But I want to hear it from heaven, you know? It's just time for us to take steps of faith. What I love about taking steps of faith is that Jesus does a whole lot of things as you take those steps of faith. But what I love is that Jesus expands your life. He expands your capacity. He expands your purpose. He expands your vision. Jesus tells Peter, don't be afraid. He knew we we're going to be afraid. He knew we were scary cats. He says, don't be. Just don't be. I will make you fisher, uh, fishers of men. You'll be fishing for people. What does that even mean? Like, if you're a fisher and this man tells you, now you're going to be fishing for people, I'm like, Jesus, I don't want to go to prison here, man. You know, like, I don't want to get into fishing people. Like, you know, doesn't make sense. But what Jesus does is that he expands your life, he expands your purpose, he expands your vision. I don't think Peter fully understood what it meant, but what Jesus was doing is was expanding his mind. He's expanding his life. Don't miss it. Miss it. God is about to expand your life. What you felt was comfortable and convenient to you, if you allow Jesus to come in, if you go deeper, if you take steps of faith, 
God is about to expand your life. He, he is about to expand you in ways that you will not comprehend. If you do these three essential things, your life is never going to look the same. Never going to look the same. Come on, let him inconvenience you. Let him go, go deeper in you and you go deeper in him. Come on, take a step of faith today. Take a step of faith, whatever it is. It doesn't matter if it's big or small, but just take a step of faith. Maybe it's talking to someone today here in the room. Maybe it is praying for someone here out there. Maybe it is to reach to someone that you know you've had to reach out to them for a long time to say, I'm sorry, it was me. Even if you don't believe it was you. That is faith. I'm just going to do it because I, like, I feel God telling me to say, I'm sorry. Come on, it's time to forgive someone in faith. For some here, today is the day that you're going to say yes to Jesus and you're going to commit to him and you're going to follow him. Today might be a day that some here you're going to give for the first time financially. Maybe for some is you're going to give your time with volunteering. Maybe, well, I don't know what it is, but whatever God is calling you to do, allow him because he wants to expand your life. He wants to expand your life in ways that you cannot reason, you cannot fathom, you cannot comprehend. God is working in your life. How would you understand it? Is the creator of heaven and earth doing something in you, calling you into purpose? There's things that you won't understand, won't comprehend, but it is the faith say so God if you say so God I'll trust you sometimes I wish that God would just give me everything that's ahead of me so then I could take the steps I genuinely wish that's how God worked but God quite honestly he just says go move Okay, where, how much, we wonder in those spaces and there's tension in those spaces because it's inconvenient. But as you allow yourself to be inconvenienced and you trust him and you start taking those steps, you literally see God operating and moving. And I'm convinced that that's why God doesn't give you the full picture. Because he wants for you to see him at work. He wants you to see this invisible God orchestrating something in your life. Come on, don't miss it. Don't miss God expanding your life. Don't miss God doing something in you. Don't miss the possibility that God wants to use you to change your whole family tree. Don't miss the opportunity that God might write history through you. Don't, don't miss it. God might want to expand your life and do something so significant, not for the here and now, but for the generations that are coming after you. Come on, don't miss it today. Don't miss it today. Say yes to Jesus. Say yes to following him. Say yes to surrender. Say yes to serve. Say yes to groups. Say yes to whatever it is that he's calling you to do. You won't regret it. As we close, can you stand with me today? Three essentials. Let him inconvenience you. Go deeper with him and take a step of faith. God, we thank you today for who you are. We thank you that you are faithful God, a merciful God, a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, seven chances. Thank you, God, that you don't get tired of us. You are madly in love with us, Lord. God, I pray for every single person in this room and watching online that feel this tug from heaven to surrender to you for the first time, to give their lives to you for the first time. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, you don't even fully understand or comprehend what that is all about, but you just feel God saying, give your life to me, surrender to me. 
Let me be your Lord and Savior. If that's you today, I want to pray for you. And all it takes is to say, if you say so, God. If you say so, I'll take the step of faith. I'll give my life to you. And I want to pray for you. Everyone with their eyes closed just for the respect of people around you. But if that's you, can you just raise your hand up to heaven as a sign of saying, God, if you say so, I am here. I'll give my life to follow you. And all of us here together, can we say this prayer? Jesus, come into my life and save me. I give you my life. I'll trust you in faith. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Be the Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. God, I pray for every single person in this room, God, that you're calling them deeper, that you're calling them to be inconvenienced. I pray, God, that first of all, you would give them a conviction of specific things that, it, that comes from you. God, I pray that you would give clarity to every single person in this room that's about to take a step of faith. Give them clarity over the steps. Give them clarity, Lord, that it is you calling them deeper. God, and I just pray for your grace that strengthens your people. I pray, God, that there would be a turnaround moment in every single one of our lives as we allow you to do what you want to do in our lives. Have your way, God. I pray that this week will be the best week of our lives because we're stepping in faith this week. We're going into work with faith. We're going into our homes with faith. God, have your way in every single one of our environments. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, come on. Can you all say with me, amen and amen and amen. Hey, love you, family. Have an incredible week. Take steps of faith. Talk to someone that you don't know in the room. Tell them that they look good, especially if you're single. Okay, not just kidding. <laughs> love you all. Have an awesome week.